ASRock's B850i Lightning Wi-Fi is an AM5 ITX motherboard with some great bang for buck. It skips RGB and other unimportant bells and whistles for the essentials. This board comes in at $220 US dollars, which is quite a bit lower than the competition, making it an attractive option to those trying to work within a lower budget. We're going to test the B850i Lightning with AMD's flagship Ryzen 9950X 3D CPU, but before that, let's see what you get for the money. In the box you'll find Wi-Fi antennas, two SATA cables, a thermistor cable for measuring temps at its endpoint, and two screws for the M.2 slots. The IO shield is already pre-installed. A killer 2.5 gigabit LAN port along with eight USB ports are included, although four of them are USB 2. The ones above the HDMI port are, starting from the top, a USB 3 5 gigabit and 10 gigabit below it. The one below also supports BIOS flashback, allowing you to update the BIOS even with a non-compatible AM5 CPU. An essential feature these days with all the different generations supported. The USB ports under the LAN jack are both 10 gigabit, although the USB-C port supports display out and ASRock says it can turn into a 40 gigabit per second USB 4 port with selected processors. I looked through the manual and website and couldn't find a list, so I asked and it's unfortunately only unlocked for 8000G series processors. Oh. Finally we have SPDIF, microphone and audio jack, bias flashback button and the antennas. Wi-Fi is handled by a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E card. DDR5 memory support is rated at 8200 plus, which I find to be very optimistic, but I didn't have a higher kit to test. I was sent a 6000 kit for this review. The VRM is a 10 plus 1 plus 1 power phase which is good for the dollars and comes with a decently sized heatsink. A steel reinforced Gen 5 X16 slot is included which runs at full speed using 7 and 9000 series AM5 processors. With the 8000 series, the speed halves or less depending on the CPU. It's a similar deal with the M.2 slot. It's a Gen 5 X4 with the 7 and 9000 series, but drops with the 8000 series. The M.2 slot on the rear is Gen 4 X4 and a couple of SATA ports are also included. For front I.O. there's a USB 3 and USB-C header. Audio is handled by a Realtek ALC1220. There aren't a lot of fan connectors, just three, CPU, AIO pump and one for chassis fan. While there's no LED lighting on the board, there's a couple RGB headers if you need to light things up. AMD loaned me the Ryzen 9950X3D to test with this board. Problem is, the BIOS was out of date and doesn't support it. Luckily, there's BIOS flashback to the rescue, although this one works a bit differently to what I'm used to. This flashback requires a CPU and RAM to be installed along with a power supply. Put the correct files on the USB drive, rename it, and hold the BIOS flashback button for 3 seconds to get it started. The whole process was straightforward and worked fine, and now we're going to test it with 32GB of G-Skill DDR5-6000, a Fantex 360mm AIO liquid cooler, and a Samsung 990 Pro M.2 NVMe SSD. Powering it all is a Thermaltake Tough Power 1000W SFX power supply. Oh, and just a heads up. I primarily cover mini PCs on my channel, so that's mobile CPUs instead of desktop. I thought I'd add some of the higher end chips into the chart as a comparison point, since I don't have the data for desktop CPUs. In Cinebench single core, the 9950X3D takes the top spot. I checked this against the CPU Monkey results, and it's spot on. Interestingly, the HX370 mobile chip isn't too far behind. In multi-core, the 9950X3D soars past the mobile chips. This is a pretty good score, slightly behind the CPU monkey result, which is 42,871. This score is around 3.5% better. It's not the best multi-core result, but not far off it. In Geekbench single-core, the 9950X3D smashes past 3000 and is far ahead of the rest, as it is in multi-core. The 7945HX may have the same number of cores and threads, but the higher power limit, 3D V cache and so on, make a big difference for the desktop chip. AMD does include integrated graphics with this processor, which is very basic, but useful when you need to troubleshoot or don't have a graphics card lying around. It performs about the same as the Radeon 610M. I also tested the board with the Gigabyte RTX 4070 Super I use for my eGPU setup, 
and it performs well with the Azeroc board. It gets a slightly higher score in all 3D Mark benchmarks than my mobile on desktop test. Yep, that's DX11, DX12 Time Spy, and DX12 Steel Nomad Lite. So, we're all good there. Idle power draw for the system from the wall with integrated graphics was 50 watts, and that jumped to 108 watts with the RTX 4070 Super. Maximum power draw shows the 9950X3D chugging quite a bit of power under load. It maxed out at 282 watts and 445 with the RTX 4070 Super. I kept an eye on the VRM temp and it maxed out at 90C, which is fairly high, but it can handle up to 110C, so if you're planning to use the flagship CPU with this board, it would be a good idea to make sure there's some airflow going past the VRM. With a Fantex 360mm AIO on an open bench, the CPU maxed out at 85C at 21C ambient. Mashing the delete key on startup will get you into the BIOS. There's an easy mode which has the essentials on the one screen. The advanced mode has the overclocking options, advanced motherboard settings, and in the tool tab, you'll find instant flash for updating the BIOS. The auto driver installer pops up on a new Windows install and is very useful for getting the drivers needed as soon as you connect to the internet. Hardware monitor has the fan tuning options including the Fantastic tool where you can manually specify the fan curve visually and well, that's about it. All the essentials are covered. Alright, so we've looked at Azeroc's Phantom Gaming B850i Lightning Wi-Fi motherboard in detail. Ugh, what a mouthful. Let's go over the pros and cons. The biggest draw card is the price, being cheaper than other B850 ITX motherboards while still able to handle AMD's flagship thanks to a decent VRM. Performance is good all around, and it's really hard to complain for the price. That being said, there are some cutbacks such as the lack of steel reinforced RAM slots, no Wi-Fi 7, and no USB 4 unless you're running an 8000G series CPU. ASRock's B850i Lightning Wi-Fi is my type of motherboard, being a cheaper option with features that aren't necessary for most. It covers the essentials, and if I was building an ITX PC using an AM5 processor, I'd go for this, and use the savings elsewhere. Well. It was fun to review something else for a change, but if you're wanting to build a mini PC using an 8000G series CPU, you should definitely check out the Azeroc Desk Mini X600 two-part video, which is one of the best options for those CPUs. You can find that video right here. Cheers!